put that into words. Why did you choose that sick? Say a little more in detail. Six and one. What do you mean? Where is this one coming from? Another P. Another P in the other parentheses. What do you mean by six and one? Six times one. Six. When we multiply these together, six P times one P will give us six P squared, which is what? That's part of what we need to get. Um, so because six P times P equals six P squared, and that's definitely part of it. Um, Looks like she also chose one and one because one times one is one. And that's something else that we need to have, okay? So why is six incorrect? Why, why, do, why does ultimately the factorization not work correct? Or for Martin? Because, again, one before the answer is one, but it's all get involved. Okay, so what? So we get the. Uh, can I help you? Um, he's already started the math section. Okay, so you guys go ahead and head down to the library. Thank you. And uh, you can take your stuff if you want, but I think you'll be done. You can leave your stuff also. If that's your choice. I have two other classes to do it. I don't think anybody has not come back to the. Okay, so if we were to distribute this to this, we would wind up getting 6p squared, that's right. We also talked about how we get 1, but we would also get 6p plus 1p, which is 7p, which is not 5p. So it just um, it doesn't work out. Engaged, participate. It's a little on that much more smoothly. So why did you have to choose four and negative four? You see four, negative four there. Uh, you chose it for a reason. Why? Even if you just know why, again, this helps us to actually write it out. At some point, we're going to multiply that constant times that constant. That's what happens when we distribute. We're going to multiply everything by everything else. And at one point, we're going to multiply 4 times negative 4. And we know that when we multiply those two constants together, we need to get negative 16. So that's definitely informing her decision to use 4 and negative 4. Something else that happens that also is uh, important. What else we need to have happen? And couldn't we do 2 times 8? Is 2 times negative 8 the same? Right, when we do the four times n and negative four times n, we also get no ends, right? And we need no n terms or zero ends when you choose 49 n squared and the negative 16. So not only this, but four n minus four n is zero, and that's exactly what we want to have happen. But ultimately, Jennifer's factorization doesn't work out because of what? Yeah? Um, she doesn't have the 49. She don't get 49 n squared. So, yeah, that's why, that's correct. Um, it doesn't make a 49n squared. So, we don't like that. What, what would give us everything we're looking for? It would give us this negative 16, the 0 in, also the 49n squared. 7n plus 4 and a 7n minus 4. Okay. Um, 
Could you think of uh, like three more examples? Like this one, that the first number right here, this first coefficient is not just one, right? So we're not just looking at x squared or n squared. Uh, there's no n term, and we've got some constants. Can you think of another example? Got factors. like this, right, that I can write down right here that'll factor similarly to this. N squared minus 32. Something other than just one here, some other number here. 16. 16 N squared minus 36. Minus 36. Okay. Uh, I need some room for the factorizations. What's another example of something that'll factor nicely? 25 n squared. 100. Okay. Others? One more. How would this one factor? Four <coughs> minus thirty-six. Plus. Uh huh. This one. Minus ten. Five and plus ten. This one. So it's, it's clear that at least uh, a good number of us are seeing the pattern. What kind of number do we need to have here? Uh, perfect square. A perfect square, this one? Perfect square. Perfect square. So again, we have a difference. We're subtracting. Let's write the difference of two squares. Same as before, same as, I don't know, what is that going to be? 4.3 uh, and 4.3. Um, we have two squares, two perfect squares here. The first thing's square root plus the square root of this, and plus the square root, the square root of this minus the square root of that. Um, also, what if we have something like, uh, let's say, 9x squared minus. 13. Is that a difference of two squares? It's not a difference of two perfect squares. We had this discussion, this similar discussion last time with this kind of a deal. Well, is there a number though that will multiply by itself and make 13? Yeah. It's just what, what about that number? Because it's decimal and it goes on forever and it doesn't repeat. It's this irrational number. But we could write that 3x plus, what do we call that number that multiplies by itself and gives you 13? The square root of 13, whatever it is, some decimal that is uh, between 3 and 4, right? somewhere in between those two. Uh, so the square root of 13 and then 3x minus the square root of 13. That's all we're doing here, right? The square root of 6, uh, plus the square root of 6, minus the square root of 6. Uh, plus the square root of 100, minus the square root of 100, plus the square root of 81, minus the square root of 81. It's just that those square roots are nice, whole numbers. Well, what if we did like 5x squared minus 11? Could we factor that using this difference of squares idea? Yeah. How so? How would it factor? Square root of 5 times x, right? x not in the square root outside the square root. Then? Minus. Minus square root of 11. The square root of 11. Square root of 5 x squared. 5 times x. Plus, plus the square root of 11. Then 
time you have something x squared, something n squared, or whatever, minus another thing, you could factor it this way. Using the same kind of an idea. And this is, you know, we would use this if we have a nothing for our x. We have a zero x. In order for the to get that uh, zero x term, we have to get two opposites adding together. The like terms, the x terms, they do the exact opposite, so when you add them together, we get zero. The only way to get that to happen is to have these identical uh, factors, right? Square root, of square root of five times positive square root of 11, square root of five times negative square root of 11. So we've got this uh, example is not quite done correctly. This blue thing though is correct. What's going on there? What is Emmett doing? Kind of a broad question. What is Emmett doing in that blue circle? So we can answer that by saying why he's doing it, how he's doing it, what he's looking for, whatever it is. have several different answers or several parts to our answer. Uh, how, how are you answering this? What's he doing? What's Emmett doing? He's factoring. Okay. Yeah. He's um, he's working on it. It's part of his factoring. part is, is all the way down here, but we, we have to go through this to as part of the factory process. Okay. Any other ways you could put this answer? Any other parts of this answer? It definitely could be. How about after all is said and done, it's finished, he's done all the work involved in this uh, this face in blue here. What has he found? What has he ultimately found in the end? What information? What, what ultimately does he pull back into the equation solving process? What's that? Ultimately, yeah. But just like the next step, this next step from, he starts here, does this, and now he's here. So what did he get out of this process? Factors, he got factors, these are factors? Factors of what? Of negative 30. Um, so the factors of negative 30 that also, what? Add to make negative 7. So he's found factors of negative 30 that add negative 7, uh, and he's written negative 7 as the sum of those two numbers. So he's split up negative 7r into negative 10r plus 3r. Okay, so found... Negative 10 and 3. How did he do that? Where are all these numbers coming from? Well, they're coming from here, yes, but where'd this number come from? What's that? A times C? 
Okay, so we can also answer this question by saying he's, he's doing the AC method. Just, and that's just what I call it. You can call it some stuff here called magic number factoring. There's a variant of this called bottoms up, which I kind of forget what, how that goes. But I don't, I don't teach that, it's a little too magic. It's a little more mathematical. We use the AC method, right? So this meaning that this number, negative 30, is A times C. What's A? 6 and C, negative 5. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. And this guy right here, this is B. There's B right there, negative 7. And we already said, these two are factors of negative 30. They multiply to make negative 30. They add to make negative 7. That's exactly why we chose those two numbers. And then with that information, this is, this is what we're looking for. This is the result of this work in this blue circle. All we've done uh, we've gotten out of it is negative 10 and 3. And we take negative 7 and we split it into negative 10r plus 3r. If we add those together, we get negative 7r. But what we're about to do is factor out anything that these two have in common and anything these two have in common. Well, we've guaranteed that 6 is going to have something in common with 10. Okay? Because we've multiplied 6 times negative 5 to get negative 30, and negative 10 times something else equals negative 30, right? 6 times something equals negative 30. Negative 10 times something equals negative 30. So 6 and negative 10 must share some factors in common. And the other factors must be with this 3. Because negative 10 times 3 is negative 30, and 6 times negative 5 is also negative 30. All of the factors are, are the same, right? They're the same factors are here and here as are here and here. Does that make sense? Um, so if we've, if we've done that, then, well, when we factor out what's in common, we're going to have this identical set of parentheses here and here. So let's back up a little bit. What we've done here is we have 6r squared minus 10r, and here we have 2r times 3r minus 5. Know, tell me about that. What, what's going on from here to there? Or how do we know that this is the same as this? Anybody tell me what we're doing from here to here? From this step to that step. What, what might you call that? Reverse distribute. Okay. Did we call it that in class or did you just come up with that? Make up that name, or did you hear it from <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> either you heard it or you made it up. I mean, I don't know if there's a, any other option. I think I heard it. You think you heard it? Okay. Well, does that name make sense? Why does that name make sense? Reverse distribute. From here to here, we reverse distribute it. Why does that, why does that name make sense? Yeah, we would take this and distribute it into there yeah, to get that. Yeah. But we go the other way. So we, we do distribution. Oh, no, we don't. We go the opposite of that. We go reverse of that. And if we were to distribute this 2r into here, that's what we would get. That's how we know they're the same. OK. Well, reverse distribute's a good name. It's just not the name that uh, is used by anyone. Okay. Uh, we just, well, I don't have enough room here. It's factoring out a common, let's call it a common factor. Okay, the greatest common factor. Now, uh, this looks like we have a reverse. Reverse distribute is a good name. It is very specific and, and states exactly what we're doing. Um, so if you want to call it that, that's great. And if you want to fit in with the, the cool math kids, we'll call it factoring out a common factor. Okay. So the common factor is 2r. This has a factor of 2, and so does this. And there's nothing else. There's no other bigger factor. If there were, we should do that one. Okay. If they shared a 2, but they also shared a bigger factor like a, a 4, we should take that one out, or whatever. But 2 is the biggest. They also share a factor of r. 
could uh, write an R out here and distribute it such that we wind up with an empty R. Okay, so we backed up the two R. Um, right, and now these two, we group these together and we ask the same question, what's the biggest factor they have in common? Just have that to be a one. One is the biggest factor they have in common. And so we factor out a one. And now down here, can someone explain how we get from here to here? Other than, you know, well, that goes there and that goes over there. Jonah? Uh, they both have the three R on the side. And they each add into one. And then the two R plus one goes north. Mm -hmm. You just heard me exactly what I said not to say. So this one goes there and that one goes there, right? <laughs> okay, certainly. You could do these problems for the rest of your life if, if that's how you remembered it. Um, you put the 3r minus 5, it's the same there, and then the 2r and the plus 1 go into this other parenthesis, right? Functionally, you've got it. You can solve these now, right? If you can get from here to there, it's important to be able to do that, and if you, if you use that pattern, you'll, you'll get it back over time, all right? But uh, that doesn't sit right with me that that's what I would tell you is going on you just follow the pattern. So uh, if you do it that way, that's fine. But I'm gonna always tell you what's going on behind the scenes as long as you have the, the capacity to understand and you do, so I'm gonna explain that, all right? To explain what happened from here to there, I'm gonna go back to this example, okay? What, what happened from here to there? What do we call that? Factoring out a common factor. Factoring out a common factor or reverse distribute, right? All right, so what's happening from there to there is reverse distribute or uh, factor in a common factor. And what's going on from this step to this step is exactly the same thing. Reverse distribute or factor in a common factor. Between these two, the common factor was 2r. Right? I can write it in such a way that 2r is outside the parentheses and I distribute the 2r and I get 6r squared minus 10r. Same thing happens here. They both have a factor of 3r minus 5. And I can write the 3r minus 5 outside the parentheses. So if I were to take this whole thing, just like we take the 2r and we distribute it, and we get this, we can take the 3r minus 5 and distribute it to the 2r. What's that going to be? It's just going to be 2r times the parentheses, 3r minus 5. 2r times the parentheses, 3r minus 5. Well, that's what we have right there. And if we distribute this over to this 1, then we'll have 1 times 3r minus 5. That's just what's written right there. Okay? That's exactly what's going on. We're factoring that common factor of 3r minus 5. It's just, it looks really weird because here when we distribute the 2r, we multiply 2r by 3r, we like put it all together. We got 6. 2 times 3 is 6. And r times r is r squared. And so we write it that way. But here, we don't do that. We just say, just to when I say here we don't do that, I'm just saying to show you that they're the same thing. We could distribute this whole parentheses to the 2r, there's that. We could distribute the whole parentheses to the 1, there's that. Um, and we could, we could distribute this 2r and say 2r times 3r, that would give us 6r squared, but that would just write it kind of funny like we do here. And then 2r times negative 5 would be negative, well, 2r. Five, that would be negative 10 r. Okay. What else? We couldn't have done. What's that? I have the scores written down. Do you want to toss to me? Oh. And you're still logged on Schoolmaster in there? Do you want me to log you up? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. I saw the names popped up, so I just downsized the list. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
No. Okay, write it down your, your response to that first question. Why would she do that? Why would she just use well enough alone? Uh, Again, this could be a kind of a multifaceted answer. What's what's any part of a reason why Clara would have done this? Easy on me. And she's going to have to do that. Okay, zero. Great. Uh, to make one side zero. Okay. Well, that's not the whole thing. That's really important that one side is zero, the reason why it should be equal to zero, that's something else we should go into. Okay, Dakota, what? Because uh, to make it uh, uh, trinomial is a factor. Okay, well, I would say yes, but also, isn't this already a trinomial? If we wanted it to be, couldn't we write plus zero here? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's good. We, we, we do want to have all of the, the whole trinomial on one side, and the important thing is zero on the other side. Right? We, we could just write some trinomial. We could, uh, let's say, um, you know, add 17 to both sides. That way, we have a trinomial over there, and maybe we could factor it. Right? But even if that was factorable, if we still have stuff over here, there's a reason why that's not going to work out too well for us. Because we're going, you said it, it very importantly, we are going to factor it. That's an well, important thing. Like uh, so anything times zero, two zeros, so uh, when we get to the end, when we, when we get towards the end, like this part right here, if you didn't, if you did all this work to factor and you probably, if you didn't make it equal to zero, you won't be able to factor it. Lots of polynomials are not factorable. So that's one thing. But even if you did factor it over here, you still had 5x, negative 5x squared plus 22. The problem with that is what we're using, what we're taking advantage of, is anything times 0 is 0. Right? So we need to have it be equal to 0. If it's equal to anything other than 0, there are no guarantees. Here's what I mean by a guarantee. If you got 0, and you multiply two numbers together, you get that 0. Then what can we say for sure? It's true. What's true? Here's what I'm, let me say it again. If we get zero as a result of multiplying things together, if you get zero by multiplying things mm -hmm. together, then what can we say about this stuff over here? That something has to be equal to zero? Yes, one of the things that we multiply by has to be equal to zero. Not x, right? That's not what we're saying. We're saying this thing that is a, is a factor of the answer, well, that had to be zero. The only way to multiply and get zero is to multiply by zero. If that wasn't zero, then we can put four here. Then this would have to be equal to zero. And if neither one equals to zero, then no, that's impossible. One of those has to be zero. That's why we have everything equal to zero because it's a guarantee. One of those things is equal to zero. Okay. So, um, so let's say we can set, or she can set. product property, she cannot do that unless it's equal to zero. So really important. If you're solving one of these equations, make sure one of the sides is equal to zero. Which is really counterintuitive based on our previous knowledge, the knowledge of, of uh, you know, get the x by itself. It's kind of a weird idea to not just go straight for getting x by itself, like moving constants to the other side and doing that kind of thing. Uh, get one side to be zero, then factor it, and then that way to 
here's the next question. Rather than doing the work circled in red, could Clara have taken a different approach? Could she yeah. have talked about this? Could she do it differently? Or she could she write? I can think of a three word response to this. Is there another way? Do you have to use that little X thing, AC method that I showed you? No. What's another way? To do this. Did I say check? Oh, he just can't stop himself. <laughs> Gotta answer. Okay, guess and check. <laughs> that would have been my three word response. Guess and check. What are we guessing? Stuff. We're guessing at something. What are we guessing at? What are we guessing about? What? Oh, well, we could definitely guess like just the X, like the solution. Just guess and guess. That's definitely a form of guess and check. If we do, though, want to use factoring, if we want to use factoring, we could guess at how it factors. Right? Guess at how it factors. Well, if we're going to factor this thing, the first, like the x terms need to multiply together to make 18x squared. Agreed? Mm -hmm. That's got to happen. If that doesn't happen, then why did you even try that? Okay? So we can use that to inform our guess. We can try, uh, it's got to be positive 18, so we can do 18x and 1x. But then again, we could do uh, 9x and 2x. Six and three. Well, just based on the eighteen x squared, we have three different possibilities of how it could factor. But even if we did just luckily pick the right one, we also another useful piece of information is that the constants have to multiply them together to make negative twenty two. Now, twenty two doesn't factor that many ways, but the fact that it's negative also has complications. So it could be uh, 1 and 22, but one of them has to be negative, so it could be 1 and negative 22. But then again, it could be negative 1 and positive 22. If it's not that, though, we, it could be 22 and negative 1, or it could be negative 22 and 1. That's just two factors, 1 and 22. One of them needs to be negative, and if we put this one you know, here and that one there, it's, it's different. We switch which parentheses are in, it's different. Or if we switch the signs, it's different. And 2 times 11. If you multiply one of these to be negative, so this could be negative, this could be negative, this could be positive, and this is negative. Okay? So first we have to pick which way does 18 factor? I, well, I'm going to guess this one. Okay, which way is 22 going to factor? I don't know. I'm going to pick one of these. Okay, try this one. What does it mean to you? Now we've made a guess. We're guessing 18x and x and plus 1 and minus 22. How do we check? Distribute it. Distribute this stuff to that stuff and see if it comes out to be 18x squared plus 21x minus 22. So we try this one. It doesn't work. This one doesn't work. This one doesn't work. And then there's this one. This one's not working. We try this one. It doesn't work. And we try this one. It doesn't work. Then we try this one. And it doesn't work. How many guesses and checks have we done so far? A lot. How many? Come on. You can count. Eight. Eight. Right? Two ways to factor, and then positive or negative, so we got, and, and then we could switch it, so two times two times two is eight. So that didn't work, none of those worked. So now we take all of those guesses, and we apply them to all, Now we try all those guesses in this guess for the way 18 would factor. And it turns out none of those work. We come over here, we try them in here, and we know because it's already done that if we were to happen to guess 11 and negative 2, uh, this one right here, then it
then that would have worked. But that would have taken a long time. And if this had been at the bottom of your guessing and checking list, you could have gone through all of those and only the last one would have worked. Or you could have tried all of these, which is how many? 24, 24, eight for each guess, so 24 altogether. You could have gotten the very end and none of the 24 could have worked, which could mean that it's not factorable, that's possible. So you just try 24, 24 different ways, find out that it's not factorable. Is that what you're gonna think though? Probably, No. when you get done and none of them work, you're gonna think you made a mistake. That's gonna drive you crazy. And you're gonna be too tired. And you're gonna need a nap. You take a nap. And then maybe you just give up. But then you think, no, I'm better than that. So you don't give up. So you go back. Okay? And maybe you did make a mistake, and maybe you do find it, but maybe you didn't make a mistake, and you just did all that guessing and checking again to figure out that it just really isn't that. Okay, so whew, that is bad. I would suggest using this guy right here. You can make mistakes here, but they're a lot uh, easier to check. Right? We only need to check as many factors as 396 has. Right? It's just a lot more simple. Um, takes less time, mistakes are easier to check. If this was a product, you would pay me any price for it, I'm sure. Can we this? Oh, you would pay for tens of dollars in this process. But I'm not charging you for it. It's free, you can use it. What's the other one? What do you mean? Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Magic. Bottoms up. Oh, bottoms up. Nope. I don't teach magic. <laughs> I would be a bad magician because I would just show you exactly how that trick works so that you're not left in the dark. Okay. Um, so we're going to stay with that. And that was it. All right, so if you could, uh, well, if you have questions, are there any questions from the homework? Are there problems that uh, you weren't able to explain no. yet? No, that's fantastic. Wow, you don't need to use either. Up a question on the board. Make sure you're grabbing other people's homework that are in maps. If you would, please. All right, so what's the square root of 16? Four. And how do you know? So I need to see. Oh. When you multiply four times four, you get 16. So it equals four. How do you know? Four times four is 16. Okay, so now we know what square roots are. Okay. Um, now, Now the square root of 16 is 4. That's correct, right? Um, we'll say that. But if you look at x squared equals 16, very similar kind of a question. Uh, can you tell me the solution or solutions to this equation? 4 or minus 4. Okay. x could be 4 or x could be minus 4, right? Because what, what does it mean to find the solution to an equation? Uh, what's that? Something that is uh, that a number that makes the equation perfect. Right. Okay. So oftentimes when I ask the solution, the answer, we talked about this uh, a few classes ago, the solution and the answer, they're often synonymous in, in everyday life, they, they often do work either way. Either word will work. In math, though, solution and answer are different. 
solution specific, we need your, you must be talking about an equation, maybe an inequality. And a solution is a number, or a set of numbers, so when you plug in that number, it's a set of numbers. And when I say set of numbers, I mean there's like an x and a y, there's a z, there's several different variables. But uh, if there's one variable in your equation, you're gonna find one number that when you plug it into that variable, it makes the equation true. And in this case, four squared is 16, because four times four is 16. Or negative four is 16, because negative four times negative four So here, the square root of 16 is 4. If I wanted a negative 4, I would have put a negative in front of here. I could, I could make you do that. But over here, now I'm asking you to just find a number that makes the equation true. And you can find 2. So we have to report back that both of those numbers will work. Okay. Um, so now we're going to go, though, we're going to kind of um, overkill. apply this new idea to uh, more and more complicated equations, okay? Um, if we had 2x equals 16, if we had 2x equals 16, how would we solve that equation? What's that? Divide by 2 on both sides, right? Now, that's kind of overkill for that equation because you can see I just want to multiply 2 times something to make 16. I know the answer's there, but we're, we learn to, you know, cancel out that multiplication by 2 by dividing by 2. If it was x plus 2 equals 16, how would we get x by itself then? Minus 2. Minus 2. That's where it was too negative. But if x squared equals 16, okay, dividing by 2 not, doesn't seem to be doing anything. It's not being multiplied by 2. Subtracting 2 is not going to do anything. Um, there's no 2 to, you know, addition by 2 to, two to cancel out. What we want to do is well, here we do the, the inverse of multiplication. Here we do the inverse of subtraction. The square root is at least a really great guess. We're just going to make sure that it's correct here in a second. Um, so the, the square and the square root, they sound familiar. X or similar. X squared is a number times itself. So something squared is a number times itself. The square root of a number is looking for a number that is multiplied by itself to give that number. It sounds like they're really, really similar. Let's make sure. What we want is for the square root of x squared to be x. We want it to cancel out that square, right? So let's just verify that that does work. Can you, similar to this over here, can you prove to me that x is the square root of x squared? Okay. You say the square root of x squared is x, just like you said the square root of 16 is 4. How do you know? Silly to even say it. Right? But the same reason that 4 is the square root of 16, x is the square root of x squared. Because x times x gives you that thing inside of the square root. That thing, that square root, is called the radical. That symbol is called the radical. And this thing inside, anything you see inside of a radical, inside of that symbol, is called the radicand. Radical and the radicand. And uh, again, the square root of 16, we need to allow to be positive or negative 4. Instead of writing two equations, we could write one equation, but put plus and minus, and all that means positive 4 and also negative 4. Positive 4 or negative 4. All right. So we get the idea. We, if we see an x squared equals a number, how are we going to get x by itself? Go ahead and say it. Let's get it over with. Take the square root. Square root. If you see an x squared or an n squared or an r squared or anything, and you want to get it by itself, or just an R, take the square root. 4.5. Um, we will start with 25. This is what you'll do 
on your own, but 6 z squared equals 1 uh, no, 150. First, we're going to go over one idea. There's two basic, well, I guess the most popular ideas. The first one we're going to see that it gets a little more complicated than we thought. And the other one we're going to see is just probably the easiest way to go about it. Okay. So we have this idea. I'm taking the square root to cancel out this square. So the first instinct of, uh, of lot, lots of people is to take the square root of both sides. Okay. Now, certainly you can do anything you want as long as you do it to both sides, because then both sides will remain balanced, remain equal. Okay. And uh, we're not really worried about what we get on this side yet. We want to see, does it seem to be helping us over here? Does it seem to be getting z closer to z by itself? No. The hope is that it would get, what, maybe, s what do you think? This now I'm not sure quite what's right, because probably maybe, uh, People put 6z, thinking it's cancel out the square, maybe they get 3z, and you, you know, kind of confusing the square root and, and taking the half or something. Um, the, the truth of it is, what we have here, if we were to really take the square root, would be the square root of 6 times z. That would be the square root of 6. Because how do we know something is the square root? Right? So I'm saying, how do we know something is the square root? How do we know that x is the square root of x squared? How do we know that 4 is the square root of 16? Multiply by each other. Multiply by itself. If the square root of this were 6z squared, then, or 6z, then 6z times 6z would need to be 6z squared. But it's not. It's 36z squared. If 3z were the square root, then that times itself would have to be 6z squared. But no, it's 9z. The only thing that's going to give you 6z squared when you multiply it by itself is whatever the square root of 6 is times itself, which is the definition of a thing times itself is 6, the square root of 6, uh, times z. Square root of 6 times square root of 6 will give you 6. Z squared, or z times z will give you z squared. So now that we're not making any mistakes, now that we've written down what it really is when we take the square root uh, of 6z squared, is that something we want to do? We can do it, but it seems like it's not doing the trick for us. So how else could we start this problem out? Divide by 6. Divide by 6. So we want to take the square root. Taking the square root is amazing, OK? But it's probably not best to do that until you just have one thing that's squared. To start taking the square root of a bunch of other stuff, it gets more complicated than you thought. So if we divide by 6 first, we get z squared equals 25. And now when we take the square root of something squared, we just get that thing, which is you know, pretty straightforward. Right? That thing multiplied by itself gives you that z times itself. z times itself gives you z squared, so z is the square root of z squared. So we're going to take the square root. Now next we're going to write all the numbers that when you multiply them by themselves give you 5. So what numbers are those? 5 and negative 5. Positive 5 and negative 5 satisfy that equation. Okay, so we've got the 
this, this idea planted in our head. Taking the square root of something that's squared will just give you that thing, whatever that thing is. So let's uh, put another layer on top. Um, Think about where could you use the square root idea? Go for that. I'm seeing something really common. Um, it's, a, it's a common initial idea, and then it's getting worked out in lots of different ways, and I just want to point out something about this. So the common thing that I'm seeing is, I, I think it's just our, our brain likes to follow patterns, and the pattern that a lot of brains are seeing is that we have a number outside of parentheses. And the thing that our brain initially fires off and says to do is distribute that thing. Um, I think a really common thing to have here is, and I saw it on some quizzes and stuff recently, uh, is 4x minus 4 squared. I just want you to, I really thought about this and, and paused for you to realize this can't be right. Okay? Um, first, distribution works when we have, the only time we've ever done distribution so far is one number times one set of parentheses and distributes everything in the parentheses. Has there ever been a power up here? Not yet, not so far. Now there is, but there hasn't been in the past. I want you to think about if there is a power of two, well now it's different. What does, what does raising something to the second power mean? What does that mean to square something? Okay, the parentheses is squared, but what does it mean, just very basic, what does it mean to square something? Multiply it by itself, right? It. Now, it is this whole parentheses. So what the square means is b plus c times b plus c. Okay. If we were to distribute this a right now into this parentheses, and then square it, we would get ab plus ac times ab plus ac. So you can see, really, if we were going to distribute, we could only distribute this a into one set of parentheses. We don't distribute it to both. We only distribute to the, the one that's next to it. We could write it next to this one, but it would only go into this one. It can't go into both. Okay? So that's one thing. What we really have here is 4 times x minus 1 times x minus 1. And so at most, if we wanted to distribute, we could write 4x minus 4 times x minus 1. And that, let's go get and see if somebody can help on this out. So, any idea that you have about distributing that 4 would have to have that 4 distributed to one set of parentheses. Okay. Which if we distribute that 4 into one, of those, one set of parentheses, we don't have something squared anymore. We don't have something times its identical copy. So that kind of messes up this, using the square root idea. So, I don't know. That doesn't seem to be helping us out. So 
something we can do. You know, forget about distributing the poor. It seems to not be helping us out. What else can we do? How else can we set up this up? Okay, divide both sides by four. Now, right now, it's just an idea, just like distributing was an idea. Distributing seems not to be so great. Let's see if we divide by four. See if that does something. Divide by four on both sides. Let's see if it helps us out over here. Really, this is four over four times x minus one squared over one. You remember x squared over one? That's definitely the same as that. If we multiply straight across, we get exactly the same thing. Four divided by four is one, so all we have left is x minus one squared. all the math correctly, cancel things out, just the way they, uh, they are able to cancel out. And now we don't have that 4 anymore, so that seems to be a little simpler. But what now? What can we do next? Say what? Okay, um, so that's also a common thing to do. Do that. Okay. And so what you're trying to do is like, do this, square the thing. Let's see if that works. Okay. Using what we know to be the definition of squaring something. What does it mean to square something? So this squared is this times itself. Okay. So what we're wanting to have happen is for it to work out to be this, x squared minus 1 squared. Let's see if that happens. x times x is x squared. Uh, x times 1 is negative 1x. One negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1, x. Uh, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So we do get x squared. And we do get plus, uh, well, we don't get minus 1. We get plus 1. And then we also get minus 2x. Okay. You remember that when you say square, or you take the third power or the fourth power, it means multiply this thing by exactly itself numerous times, which is not the same as just giving this a square and this a square. Now, if that's something that that you're attempting to do, it's a very common thing. You're in good company, lots of people do that, but it's just because they forget, I'm supposed to multiply this parentheses by itself. That's not gonna come out to be just this thing squared minus this thing squared, or this thing squared plus this thing squared. Okay. So that's, it's just not mathematically um, sound. We could multiply it out though, we could just square the whole thing and get x squared minus 2x plus 1. So now we've got this quadratic, just like we've had before, we have to factor it. And then the idea of using the square root is to avoid that whole factoring thing. Okay. So let's back it up to that previous step. Actually, multiply this out would mean that we would, we would have this, this quadratic we'd have to factor just like we have done in the past. And the square root idea avoids that whole factor. So, what if we took the square root of both sides? Would, would the square root of x minus 1 squared be x minus 1? Okay, would you be able to justify that? How do we know that x minus 1 is the square root of x minus 1 squared? This times itself is that thing, right? The original thing we took the square root of. So we can take the square root of the other side, square root of 2. Except for, whenever we take the square, the, at the stage where we take the square root, we always need to include plus or minus. Because either positive times a positive is going to give us, or positive square root of 2 times a positive square root of 2 is going to give us 2. Or negative square root of 2 times negative square root of 2 is going to give us 2. Now 
we're going to get x by itself still. It's almost there. How are we going to get it by itself? Add one to both sides. Okay. I want you to keep something in mind. All I'm doing here is reminding you what this plus minus notation means. In one case, it could equal the positive square root of 2. In another case, it could equal the negative square root of 2. That's the positive, negative, the negative. Okay. So when we add 1 to both sides, we're really getting two solutions. 1 plus the square root of 2. If we add 1 to both sides here, then x equals 1 minus the square root of 2. So either we're going to take 1 and add the square root of 2, or 1 and subtract the square root of 2. Either way, we're going to get 1 plus the square root of 2, or minus the square root of 2. Keep in mind that that would be that plus minus notation. We're going to take 1 and add square root of 2, or subtract the square root of 2. Those are our two solutions. So even if we have parentheses squared, we can take the square root of the parentheses squared. The square root would just be whatever's in the parentheses. Let's give it another go. Love taking the square root. Square root is the best. Try and set that part up. Try and set up the square root part. Remembering the plus and minus.
if we were to like write steps one, two, three, four, they would all would be kind of impossible, okay? Because all of these things are varying from problem to problem. But the thing, the idea that is driving us and motivating us, uh, getting us to do each thing that we do, is that at some point, step number, who knows, could be number two, could be number four, I don't know. But that step would look like this. Take the square root of both sides. That's what we would do. So just before that, all the steps leading up to that, we're not sure exactly what they are precisely, but they are leading us to isolate the square. Whatever's being squared, whether it be x squared or x inside parentheses with other stuff, it's squared. So we go through all these steps, who knows how many steps it's gonna take, but however many it takes, we have to make sure we do it incorrectly, and that at some point we get the square by itself, and we take the square root of both sides. That's how these kind of go. So first let's get the square by itself. What do we need to do in order to get the square by itself? Add 18, okay? Let me just, before I add 18, which is what I would do, I think it's a great idea. If we were to first divide by seven, it's a good idea, because you're thinking it'll cancel out that seven. Remember, if we're adding or subtracting in the numerator here, we have to divide everything, we have to distribute the division. We have to divide this by seven, and this by seven, and then that looks gross. So let's not do that. Let's not divide by seven quite yet. First, let's add 18 to both sides. Okay. 7 times x minus 4 squared equals 28. And now, what do we do? Divide by 7. Divide by 7, cancel out that 7. Okay. Um, let me pause here for a second. Because okay. the, the next thing you're going to write is that x minus 4 squared is uh, 4. Yeah. And so I, I've been asked this lots of times and in all the years I've been teaching, well, look, you just divide the seven by seven, but you didn't divide this by seven. Right? You didn't divide x minus four squared by seven. Okay? But I, I address that here in this problem, right? this step right here. I'll do it again in this problem. Let's rewrite this as the, the product of two fractions. Seven over seven times x minus four squared over one. Now multiply these two fractions together. How do we multiply fractions? Straight across. Seven times x minus four squared. Seven times x minus four squared. Seven times one, seven. So this fraction is the same as the product of these two fractions, but seven divided by seven, just like anything divided by itself, is one. So we just have one times this fraction. This fraction is just x minus four squared. Divided by one, no reason to write divided by one. All right, look at that. That's what we did. We isolated the square just now. And so now what? Take the square root of both sides. There we go. X minus 4 equals square root of 4? Plus, plus or minus. Very important there. Think about if this quantity, if what, whatever we plug in for x, if, if this comes out to be 2, then 2 squared is 4. If this comes out to be negative 2, we still square it, we still wind up getting positive 4. So we want to include, when we take the square root, we include the plus or minus part of it. So whether this is positive 2, right, if this is positive 2 or this is negative 2, when you square it, you'll still get positive 2. All right, how are we going to get x, x by itself? Add 4, so x equals. How do I add four to plus or minus two? What does that mean? Yeah, take four and plus two, or take four and minus two. Four plus or minus two will give you a valid solution, right? Four plus two will give you six, or four minus two will give you two. Either way, you put a six in there, six minus four is two, two squared is four. I uh, put a 2 in there, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. And since we've done all our work correctly from here to here, it will also work in the original equation. 
Feel free to check those, put six up there, put two up there. It's all gonna work. today or started previously today? Previously. Right. So all these quadratic equations have had two solutions. Okay? And the main reason for that, we can go all the way back to a, a really basic quadratic equation. We actually looked at it at the beginning of today. x squared equals 16. This is a quadratic equation. It's a really easy one. Right? There's two numbers that will give you 16. Right? That's the reason you square it. So it's this thing that when you square a number, you're doing positive times positive and negative times negative. And so there's uh, two different ways to get there. And at some point in all the quadratic equations, there's a square there, which allows you to have maybe a positive number or a negative number um, that's, that's kind of at the root. And you can see that it doesn't always work to be a positive and a negative. Right? But since all this other stuff is going on, um, there's, there's two ways to get the solution really Without giving too much detail, I would say it goes back to that. It's because we have the square there, and, and when we have squares, there's these two possibilities. Um, and, and just one quick thing in case you did miss this all this plus minus thing means it represents two equations this one equals two, this one equals negative two. In case that says it just represents two different equations. Rather than write these two, I say, I've said it many times, mathematicians are, the, are these creatures that like to use as little ink as possible. So I imagine the, the stories that I write in my head that mathematicians used to write both of these equations out and they realize all I'm doing is writing these two equations. The only difference is there's this little negative in front of here. So I'll just shorten that up by saying plus or minus. Okay, that's all. Instead of writing two, we write one and use this little notation to represent that. Okay. Um, since we have a little bit more time, I'm just going to ask you a quick question. <coughs> what is the solution to that Square root of both sides, like we've been doing. We got x is equal to the square root of negative 4. Remember, the square root of a number is a number times itself. Gives you that number. What number times itself is going to give you a negative 4? Why not? Because it's, you can't get negative. Unless you have a negative and a positive. Yeah, you need a negative and a positive to multiply to negative and negative, but we need two identical numbers to multiply. So either you would have a positive times positive, which is positive, or negative times negative, which is negative. There's no number that we know of that we've worked with any real number that will satisfy this equation. But that's where we come up with imaginary numbers. Okay? So that's not this section. This next section we're going to be talking about imaginary numbers, complex numbers. Um, so let's just accede to that idea. But for now we'll have real solutions. But sometimes it'll just be like the square root of 3, which is a very nice. Alright, thanks guys.